and welcome to this week's episode of War Games Geek. Now this week on the table I'm painting something a little bit different. I'm painting a fantasy barbarian figure. Uh, this is a big old fella. He's a 32 mil heroic scale. Uh, so it's a bonus because I can actually see what I'm painting for once. And um, what I've done here is I've painted him with uh, an undercoat primer of uh, barbarian flesh, which is appropriate, I suppose, as he's a barbarian. And uh, what I've done is I've mounted him also onto a 25 millimeter uh, circular base. So I've left him to dry for a couple of days as I've been a bit busy with some other projects and stuff like that. And uh, just been looking forward to getting stuck into this one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a start on painting in the uh, cloak, his fur cloak that he's wearing. And for that, I'm using um, Army Painter's uh, Skeleton Bone. Uh, and that's a nice uh, colour and uh, should really come up nicely with the, uh, with the shade when the shading takes place. So just working my way around the neck and into the collar here. What I want to try and be as careful with as I can is I don't really want to touch onto the skin areas as obviously I've already primed those in that barbarian flesh colour, the sort of finished colour. So I uh, just want to take my time on that area. If it touches the axe and the axe handle and his hair and stuff, I'm not too concerned about that. Just want to try and avoid getting it onto the, the flesh areas and there's a fair bit of exposed flesh here you've got most of his chest both the arms and the legs the sort of tops of the legs are exposed as well so coming around to the back then turning the figure around just uh, with this because it's a fur it's a quite a sort of rough um, texture and it's just important to try and make sure you get it into all of the recesses otherwise you'll end up with a sort of bit of pinks showing through which uh, we don't we want to try and avoid if we can at all, uh, if at all possible so whilst I'm painting that in, just want to talk a bit about the uh, Army Painter colour primers. They are really good. Um, I, you, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know uh, that I do tend to use the colour primers where possible, uh, specifically for things like um, Dark Ages figures where they're wearing a lot of chain mail, so they've got the nice uh, plate mail metal colour. Uh, I've used it on the um, Confederates that I painted, so I uh, sprayed them all with uniform grey. So it just takes an awful lot of time out of your painting um, and also it gets into all those sort of little detail areas that are harder to reach with a brush. So it just, uh, you know, if we're talking about painting large regiments then it's a, a real sort of game changer for saving t uh, hours of time trying to get it, uh, things um, moving along on the, on the table. So what um, I will say is about the paints is that you need to be a bit careful with them because they, uh, the coloured ones tend to be a little bit thicker than the white and the black. Um, and so when you're spraying them on, just uh, be a bit careful that you don't overdo it and, and take out some of the detail. I did do that with this figure uh, when I painted him originally, so I had to be a bit careful, so I had to wipe it off, uh, and then, uh, actually I washed it off, and then uh, started again. So that's the uh, fur cloak uh, done on the outside, uh, and um, it comes down to sort of part of the chest area there, and I've also done the tops of the boots, which are also uh, in fur as well. So that's the all of the fur detail now completed. Uh, what I'd say again, just be careful around the tops of the, the boots where you're trying to not uh, touch onto the barbarian flesh. So the next colour in that I'm using then is leather brown for uh, the bottoms of his boots here. Um, nice nice uh, sort of chocolatey brown colour. I've just sort of sped along there a little bit just to show you the boots completed. And uh, he's already starting to, to take shape, especially if you turn him around to the other side. So uh, that's the, um, the two colours there that I've used so far. So the skeleton bone for the fur and then the leather brown. So the next colour I'm using then is uh, Greedy Gold. And I'm using that for the uh, belt that goes around his waist here. Um, and I'm going to do the whole thing in that, in that Greedy Gold colour. And then on the other side, if I turn him around, also he's got a uh, sort of metal bracelet on his left uh, wrist. So I'm going to uh, use the greedy gold for that as well. So uh, let's turn him back around again. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in this uh, loincloth. Now I could have carried on with this skeleton bone that I used before. But for this one, I'm using dark stone, which won't pick up the uh, quick shade dip quite so well. Um, but um, I think it's just nice to have a bit of a contrast of, of colours, otherwise it'll be a bit too much of all of uh, the, this sort of fur colour going on. So there we go, I'm just carrying on painting that in as carefully as I can, trying to avoid touching the uh, top of his leg there. 
and um, just nice and carefully. Don't not worry too much about the dagger at the front there. That's uh, that's fine because that'll be painted after anyway. Uh, but just trying to avoid that sort of leg area. It's not very big this um, loincloth area, and I've just noticed that I've missed that other um, bracelet or um, well, it's an upper arm bracelet. I'll paint that in uh, off camera. So um, now I'm using mummy robes, and that's to do uh, the sort of strap that goes over his shoulder and holds the dagger sort of at the waistband area. So it's um, sort of a, a sort of strap of some description. Uh, it disappears under the cloak and then comes down to the dagger, as I've already mentioned, it's sort of a diagonal straight line, so not too difficult to paint that in. So I'll take my time just to get that in and, and try and avoid uh, tapping onto anything that I've already painted. So that's that. Now, I'm um, going in to do the hair, and for that I'm using Desert Yellow just to completely finish off the He-Man uh, uh, look. I, completely unplanned, but I, I was uh, planning on using that colour for the hair. I think it comes out really nice with a quick shade, so uh, that's my reason for using that colour. And uh, let's face it, He-Man used a sword, not a big battle axe, so uh, there we are. But he, he, <laughs> he certainly does have a bit of a He-Man look about him. So coming around to the other side then, just painting over that um, pink that I used for the uh, priming of the figure and just taking my time there, just trying again not to touch on anything that I've already painted. Usual thing if you do, just uh, dig out the paint and, and go back over it. Uh, the good thing with the skin tone, I've just done it there, I've jinxed it. I've just tapped onto his forehead there uh, with the yellow. Uh, so, you know, we all make mistakes. The good thing is, is that the uh, these uh, Army Painter paints is that the primer is an exact match to the actual bottled paint, so um, I can just go back over that with a bit of um, bit of the skin tone, that barbarian flesh skin tone colour, uh, and I'll do that um, just in a moment. So you can see where I've just dabbed onto the forehead there with the yellow. So let it dry first, and then we can uh, repair that uh, afterwards. So we're starting to get there now. So what's next up to do then is I am now going in to do uh, I've just touched up the forehead again. What I'm doing now is the inside of the cloak, and what I've done there is I've done a 50 fix, uh, 50 fix, a 50 50 mix, even in English, um, of the skeleton bone and leather brown. So I've just done a 50 50 mix of that so that it's uh, it's not as uh, light as the rest of the cloak, it's the inside sort of skin area of this uh, animal that's been uh, slain in order to make the cloak. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've done there 50 50 of leather brown and skeleton bone. So there's that area there. There's the little bit that you can see just between uh, his legs, which I'm gonna to have to get into. Um, excuse my thumb in the way. I'm just trying to um, get to the edges of that. So um, yeah, there's a little bit on the uh, other side of the figure as well, on the sort of underneath his right, his right arm. So I've now painted in the gold on that sort of upper arm uh, bracelet and um, What's left to do then is to paint in the axe, uh, to paint in that dagger, and um, yeah, we're pretty much uh, there. So let's uh, move on to the next stage, just showing you around the figure, what he's looking like at the moment, and uh, yeah, we're certainly making some, some nice progress. Now, as I usually do, what I'm going to do is just literally one coat. I'm not doing any highlighting on this at all. I let the um, quick shade do all that work. What I'm using here then on the handle of his Sort of battle axe is a uh, fur brown, uh, which uh, I've just sped along there for you, so you can see that the handle of the axe is now all done. So let's have a look around the other side. Then let's come around, and we're going to now use plate mail metal, and that's for all of the um, metal area on this axe. And uh, yeah, so it's a really I love these I love these metallic colours. They seem to go quite a long way, although uh, they do need to be thin. Some of them can come out quite thick. So just thin him with a tiny little dab of water, and then if you need to, just give him a second coat. So just work my way around the uh, head of the axe now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also use that for part of the uh, dagger, but we'll come on to that in a moment. So let's uh, just turn him around. So you can see that the axe is now all done. And he's really, really starting to take shape. It's funny because when they're done at this stage they kind of look a bit flat but once you get that shade on it just well they just pop and i really like the the effect of that so let's get this dagger done and then we can give him a let him dry off and then we can give him a little dip in the old quick shade so that's it done the dagger's done i've used um 
that plate mail metal again for the sheath of the uh, dagger and then for the handle I've just done a, a little bit of leather, um, leather brown on that as well. So that's it ready for dipping and it's now been dipped and as you can see that cloak has just popped. So let's just slowly turn him around and you can see where all of that uh, shade has gone in and it's just done a really great job on the tops of the boots, on the um, cloak it looks amazing, I'm really really impressed with that. Um, so it's, it's only just been done so I need to leave him to dry for at least 24 hours now. I've said before I usually try and leave it 48 hours, a couple of days for these to dry um, properly and voila, two days later he's now been um, dried off properly. I've given him a couple of coats of um, matte varnish and I've just uh, started working on the base now with that. I've just used some uh, sand and grit that I've PVA glued on. And then once that's been left to dry, again, give that a bit of time, it will need to be uh, painted on. So I paint on some dark brown and then uh, a lighter colour of skeleton bone on that base, just a dry brush. And here he is, all finished. So what I've done there then is I've given him a couple more coats of this matte varnish. He's had the base done. He's had a bit of static grass added to him as well. And I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out, actually. Uh, better than I thought it was going to look. But uh, I don't know what I was expecting. But I think the bigger scale has uh, been a bit easier on my eyes. Uh, so that's a bonus. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. I do answer all comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.